All right, we're recording this. I got to put a legal thing up here first, okay? Um, the reason we record it uh, is so that people come back, come back, come back later on, you know, review things that happen, and uh, just in case somebody gets um, triggered by some topic, and we have no control over that, you must take this is a legal thing. Control. Uh, you must take responsibility for your own responses here. So you can come back to the recording. You can stop and start as you choose. And, and so on. So with that in mind, Sherry, uh, our director of the Gary Craig Official EFT Training Centers in the English language is gonna start us off with this nice orientation with the unseen therapist. I presume, Sherry, you have one prepared, am I correct? I do, <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> well, fire away, let's start there and then we'll proceed after that. Okay, welcome everyone. What we're gonna do now is just relax, let go of the busyness of the world, the busyness of our lives, our day-to-day -day lives. And we're gonna orient our minds to that peace within. Basically, we wanna be more centered and open to the powerful energy in which we find ourselves today with all of us gathered together. So if you would, Please find a comfortable position. Just relax, take a deep breath, and gently close your eyes. We close our eyes to the outer world, and instead we look within to that peaceful place where we connect with our highest guidance, who we refer to as the unseen therapist. We are always connected, of course, but we want to join with this higher power at that deep level of love. To do this, we simply recall a loving moment in our own life for about a moment. United in love, we invite the unseen therapist into our gathering here today, and we welcome her guidance and inspiration. We set aside all our thoughts of the day, all thoughts that do not matter. We surrender any attachment we have to who we think we are and why we think we're here. We have been drawn here today by a power greater than we have any idea. Consciously or subconsciously, we have put out to the universe that we wish to connect with and express the highest and best that is within us. We want to be the light in this world that we know we can be. Unseen therapist, we want to hear your voice within us more easily and clearly than ever before. To do this, we have a quiet, peaceful place, for it is in the silence that your voice will be heard. Unseen therapist, we linger here for a moment or two in this quiet, peaceful, loving place, our true an eternal home. Sherry, I need to, you need to unmute yourself. Do 
did any of the? Yeah, it all came through. There was some static. I had to close down microphones and things like that. Oh, okay. 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 But you ended with, I'm sure people didn't hear it. And so it is, right? And so it is. <laughs> and so it is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for all of that. I, I neglected to cl click a certain button and some microphones were open and it was a little static in the background. And, but everybody is closed now except you and me and those that are going to be um, sharing their ideas with us today and their thoughts and experiences, et cetera. So I'm going to ask certain of you to raise your hand. You know who you are already probably, but Nami, please raise your hand. Uh, Mary McGrory, Marion Billich, Anne Ryan, Norma Beatrice. Um, yeah, I see. I see you're starting. Okay, good, good, good. All right, let me, uh, let me spend a few moments. Let me spend a few moments. It was kind of an overview today. You know, our main, our main goal here is to bring to your attention, not only our members, but our non-members and those interested, the true importance of being, being able to communicate with, to contact with, you know, our, the spiritual powers within us. Uh, these things we found over time are sort of, uh, they've become dormant. <laughs> We've got lots of chatter in our mind. We've got lots of thoughts in our mind with this. Typically, that's our egos speaking. And it sort of drowns out the true guidance that we can have. There's a, just a tremendous amount of power in it, as you're going to learn here. And anyone, anyone can learn to do this. Anyone. Uh, you, you don't have to have you know, requirements. You don't have to have big degrees or anything like that. Anyone can learn to do it. And as you will see, just people from all walks of life are, are doing it. Um, the way we've found with our members and our advanced training and all of this, let me back up a second. There is training for everybody in the form of our, uh, my free book, The Unseen Therapist. And you know, there'll, if you go to my homepage, which is emofree.com, E-M-O-F-R-E-E.com, there you will find a link uh, or links to not only that free ebook, but you'll find links to the advanced training, our free newsletter support, and so on. So um, anyway, I want to let you, let you know that. Now, the communication with our unseen therapist takes many forms. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of them here. Then we're going to talk with a, a couple of people that have been doing this before we talk to Nami. Then Nami and I are going to spend quite a bit of time unfolding her experience. And we'll have a couple more and we'll be done for the day. But we have all of these inputs because it's very important to come at this from different directions here, this way, this way, because there's so many things that need to be put on the table for us to give, have us get a full understanding of the value of what really goes on here when we are able to communicate in this, in this fashion. Okay, so one of those is very direct. We, we even have a, um, we even have a, a, one of our 30 advanced lessons that we have is, is dedicated, this is lesson number 10. And what it does is it, it gives you a metaphor to ask the unseen therapist directly, well, we've got this issue here. I'm angry at somebody. I, I have a problem in this area. My shoulder hurts. Whatever the issue may be, we can actually ask unseen therapists directly. And we give you a way to do that. You know, this TV guidance channel technique uh, is, is what it's called. And so people start using that. Well, it's important to recognize that just because you start to do this doesn't mean you get great results all of a sudden. No, this is, this is a process. We are conditioned to listen to our own chatter in our own head, our own egos. Our, it has the, our egos have the way to do all these things and so on. And well, maybe not. Okay. There's, a, there's a better way. Guidance is there. It's there. It's there. We're not listening. I mean, you need to learn how, learn how to listen. But I want to give you a couple of examples just to give you a sense of asking directly. I will do this quite often with, with clients when I'm working one-on-one. -on -one. We'll take a few moments, sometimes four or five minutes. Some people do longer or less. We'll get very quiet and we'll just ask the question, 
what's going on here? What's really behind this relationship issue? What's really behind this disease, this physical issue? What's really behind my resentments with so-and-so? What's really behind that? What do I really need to get to? You see, that's an important question because those of you who are familiar with the EFT tapping form of EFT, which I developed in 1995, or also recognize you typically have to do some detective work. You've got to ask some questions. You want to get down to what's really underneath all this. And so, so you sort of got to do it on your own. But when you learn to ask unseen therapists directly, what's going to be going on here? And you begin to develop this skill. You get answers that, that oftentimes you would never, you or your client, if you're dealing with a client, would never even think about because it just shows up. Uh, I, I'll give you a couple of, exa couple of examples. Uh, I was dealing with one client who had a, a lot of issues having to do with the Holocaust. Okay? And I remember among, among the things that I got here was pulling teeth, like somebody was at a dentist, somebody's getting their teeth pulled or something like that. It just showed up that way. Uh, and so I mentioned it and never thought of it before, but yes, there was a tooth pulling incident. It reminded him a lot of stuff in the Holocaust and off we go. Now we have a core issue we would never have gotten to before. And it led to a, a number, of, number of useful things. Uh, another client I, I saw by asking unseen therapists, a very young girl, four or five years old maybe, six years old maybe, in this pretty little dress. And I saw her as being, oh, so proud of herself. But something traumatic happened, something bad happened to remove all of that. Now this triggered a memory and the client had been totally forgotten. There she was as a very young girl. Yes, she was in a her pretty little dress. It was, a, it was a recital of some form. And all of a sudden, she became very self-conscious. Somebody made some comments and, oh, she had the wrong costume on. Very embarrassed, very traumatic for her. Okay. That led to all kinds of things underneath other stuff. I'll give you this, this example. They show up and they show up in ways, and I'm just going to emphasize it again, that are not normally within our thinking. Um, and they can save you loads of time. In fact, there are things that you may not even get to through more standard detective work, but loads of time. Now, another one, another one is what we call conversational EFT. There are a lot of, oh, not a lot, there are some clients who come to this process and think, well, I'm used to tapping. I just want to do tapping. I don't want to do this new thing. Or, well, I have my own religious thing, or I don't believe in God, or there's lots of reasons why they may not want to walk through the door of the unseen therapist. In cases like that, and I'm going to bring on Marion Billich here in a moment, who will give you some examples. In a case like that, we can go ahead and deal with them where, on whatever level the client wants to deal with these things, including just simple talk therapy if you want to. But you, when you get the skills, you can bring in unseen therapists and, and magic starts to happen. New things start to occur, et cetera. Let me bring on uh, Marion here. Uh, Marion, let me ask to unmute you. Are you there? I'm here. Good. Hi. Okay. Hi, everybody. You, uh, you wrote me this morning um, and you had a couple of examples of what we're just now talking about, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Before that, before that, how long have you been doing this? Doing the conversationally optimal well, EFT? Or? Uh, yeah, optimal EFT. How long have you been a member? Well, my group has been going over two years and maybe two and a half years. Okay. Three. You're, you're, a, you're a member of a practice group, the same practice group that NAMI is in. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. You're also a PhD. You've been around the block. You know your way around therapy. You have been doing so for, but I say decades is correct. Yes, decades. All right. <laughs> so anyway, you've got a couple of stories about conversational EFT. So go ahead. 
Well, I think the first story has to do with not my work, but an interaction I had with you. I think oh, that's yes. really, yes, really yes. helpful. I, I forgot. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> well, when I first um, began OEFT, um, I was Skyping with Gary about, um, I was going to speak at a webinar, and we were talking about what I was going to say. And um, before we began, he asked me how I was feeling. And I said to him, I'm basically okay, but I have a pain in my ankle. It's been bothering me for months and I've been working with Optimal EFT, it's just not going away. And so that was it. We went on, we talked about what we were gonna do in the webinar. And at some point, Gary stopped and he said, how's your ankle doing? And I checked with my ankle, there was absolutely no pain whatsoever and, 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 and let me interject a second here if i may describe if you will how long you had had the pain how intense it was at that moment and so okay on. i had the pain for several months i had broken my ankle and had surgery but really didn't have pain from it after it healed but suddenly months before this interaction i i started to have pain in my ankle i wouldn't say it was very high it was annoying more than debilitating. It was maybe a four, um, but it sure. was consistently there. And it was probably a four that morning when we were speaking. So Gary asked me how my ankle was and I turned my ankle, I looked at it. It just didn't hurt at all. The pain was gone. And he said, I've been doing conversational optimal EFT while we're talking. And I kind of knew what it was because I read his book and I'd done the lessons, but I didn't really know how powerful this could be. And I was just astounded. And also a footnote, the pain never came back. I know sometimes pain will come back. This never came back. It was gone. And I think what's so interesting about that is I didn't know that Gary was doing anything. So you can't attribute this to a placebo effect. It just was what he was doing and it worked asking the unseen therapist to heal. Yeah, let me interject a second. It wasn't really, in a sense, it was me doing something. Yes, okay. Yes. Ultimately, though, it was the unseen therapist doing it. I was just simply having a conversation with you as we were talking about things, bringing in unseen therapists as, you know, about the ankle. If I recall it, I was even thinking to myself, I was imagining as I was talking to you, some discomfort in my ankle. Now, this has been a while, so I don't remember this exactly. But imagining that I would tend to do that, you know, and then bringing in unseen therapists, love and light and so on around the ankle. And since we are connected, we are all one, even though it doesn't appear that way. Bingo. You get the result. So anyway, yes. it wasn't really me. It was me because I was a good <laughs> I was a good assistant. I was a good uh -huh. assistant, but I didn't reach out and fix your ankle. That's true. I was wasn't clear enough. No, anyway, um, but it intrigued me. And mm -hmm. I decided I wanted to try more on my own of conversational optimal EFT. But I started, when I tried to use it, I had difficulty because I'm not good at multitasking. So if someone was speaking to me, it was very difficult for me at the same time to be talking to the unseen therapist. So I kept trying and I kept having a lot of trouble. But then one day I remembered something that Anne Ryan said when she is working with people, she'll just hand it over to the unseen therapist and then let it go. Because it's not about what I need to do in my head, it's just handing it over and letting her do it. So I tried that and lo and behold, it worked. I didn't have to think about anything. I just had the thought, handed it over, and it start, I started to use it in all of my sessions with people at the beginning of the session. To, to expand on that and so, some people who think about the original, they say, how am I going to do that? How am I going to bring an unseen? I got to carry on a conversation. You know, that's going to take my focus. So how do I bring her in? Hey, once you get used to this, once you trust it, she's always there. You don't have to jump through hoops and everything else. Like Anne said, you just hand it over. And then later on, ask what's happened and, Maybe not always, but often enough to get your attention, something, you handed it over and something happened. But anyway, please go ahead. 
So I, I practiced more and more and it got easier and easier as I realized that there was nothing I had to do. Um, Gary, you say that we are assistants. That's one way to look at it. The way, another way is I make myself a vehicle through which this comes through. Sure. And, um, and so I was becoming more and more a, a clear vehicle. And I, I, I did this in every time I would work with somebody. <clears throat> and then I started to notice, as Gary mentioned before, that sometimes people aren't ready for or don't want to do optimal EFT. So I had to use, find a way to continue using optimal EFT or to introduce them to optimal EFT. So this morning I had given Gary two examples of things that happened that I thought were interesting. One was a man that I had worked with many years ago in my tapping days. I had helped him get over um, abuse by a priest. And we used tapping. Primarily, that was just tapping. We used the tell a story technique. If anyone doesn't know what that is, what you do is you tell a story and of what happened to you moment by moment. And the moment you feel any kind of emotional trigger, you stop and tap. And then you go on until you can tell the entire story without getting triggered at all. So we did this and within a few sessions, he was completely over the abuse from his childhood experience. And he was so enamored of tapping that he would go and speak about it and, and he was very, very excited about it. A few years later, he came back to me and he wanted to work on a problem he was having. He couldn't figure out the solution to. And he wanted to do tapping. I told him about optimal EFT and we tried it. He tried it a couple of times and he said, you know something, I really prefer the tapping. It works so well for me. I'm going to stick with the tapping. So I did what I usually do. I would begin the session or begin the tapping from internally asking for help from the unseen therapist. And then we would tap on whatever it is he was working on. One day when we were tapping, he started laughing and he stopped tapping, he started laughing. And when I asked him what was going on, he said, I didn't really wanna work with the unseen therapist, but she came and spoke to me anyway and she gave me the answer to my problem. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So. And, and, and let me just say, it, it happens, not everybody gets these answers in the same way. It isn't like, this is how it's done and this is, it's got to happen this way or it doesn't work. I mean, mm -hmm. I get my, sometimes I will ask and sometimes I'll get, I'll get some kind of a notion immediately. Other times I won't seem to get much, but the next day I'm talking to somebody and they will say something to me. And it's, it, was, it, it was my answer right there. It stands out like it was like they're almost like they're yelling at me, although they aren't. It just stands out that way. So it comes Many, many different ways. But you're just talking about ways you get it. Yay, yay, yay. Keep going, please. Okay. The, the second example was a woman that um, came to see me a few months ago. And she wanted only to do tapping on some fears she had and depression and anxiety. And I told her about the unseen therapist, but she really, she wasn't interested. So I decided, okay, well, maybe she's not ready. We'll continue the way I did with, with that man. I would start in the session and on my own, turn it over to the unseen therapist. And then we would do the tapping. A few sessions later, oh, I, this is important. In her very first session, she mentioned to me that she had lost her baby in an accident decades ago but had never really worked on it. And she wasn't here to work on it, but she just thought I should know. So I put that inside as this is something we're gonna have to work on. But I let it go because she obviously wasn't ready. So we were tapping in a session on one of her fears and she, um, something prompted me to say, why don't we try an experiment? Let's bring in the unseen therapist and just ask her, to help with the tapping and help with this issue. What harm could there be? And she said, okay, I'll try it. So we did. 
and the session went phenomenally well. It was quicker and deeper than she'd ever done before. And at the end of it, she said, wow, maybe we can use this unseen therapist to talk about the day my daughter died. Ah, that, was, yeah. that was it. Yeah, yeah, okay. What I'm hearing there, what I'm hearing there is along the way with unseen therapist's help, they, there became a softening on that issue. I'm, I'm even guessing there became a, at least a partial resolution of that issue to the point where she's now comfortable saying, let's open the door and get into this. Now, that's just my view. Does, does it fit? I, yes, I agree with you. And I think that's really important with some people who have fears or are opposed to anything spiritual is just allowing them to go at their pace. And it does soften. And at some point, everyone I've worked with at some point becomes open to working with optimal EFT. Okay. Sometimes sooner, sometimes later. And let me contrast this for the moment, if I can. Because I know it took me quite a while, even though I had this, this dramatic spiritual experience back in 1988. It still took me quite a while to get, to get to the point where my own ego wants to solve whatever problem it is. Okay, I'm dealing with a client, my ego, my wisdom, my personal stuff. Ah, uh, this is what we need to go fix that, okay? And so yeah, we had some success with that, but it, it took me quite a while to gradually get to the point where we're gonna bring in unseen therapists. Oh, we're bringing unseen therapists, unseen therapists, unseen therapists, and get to the point, even I who am teaching all of this, there was a process involved where I gradually got better and better and better at being the assistant. Now, not everybody goes through that. Did you go through that yourself or did you just automatically jump right in and there you were? <laughs> um, no, I didn't automatically jump in. However, I was doing something similar to the unseen therapist for decades before, something I called the inner guide. So I was already primed to listen to an inner wisdom, which I saw as you know, a higher self. And so I already had some of the skills, but even then, when I began to apply the, the work of the unseen therapist, it, it, it was a process of learning. Yeah. And it's still learning. Yes. And I, and I have to, you know, I'll do just a little plug for practice groups. It's my practice groups that really help me to improve my skills, my ability to listen, my ability to get information and help people. Mm -hmm. It's the work we've done together, hours and hours of work. Yeah. Uh, it, it, our practice groups need to get all the commercials they can because <laughs> love is best when shared. And that's a great way to share. We work with each other's issues, et cetera. And that's just part of what our, what our membership does with some frequency. So, okay. Anything else you want to mention? Very, very nice, uh, uh, Marion, but anything else? That's it. All right. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay. Let me shift now. I'm going to talk to um, Sherry for a moment. Sherry has another example or so. Uh, and then we'll get right to Nami with her story and then we'll proceed from there. So Sherry, are you there? I am here. All right. You have a, an example or two, do you? I do. Well, share away. <laughs> well, this comes under the heading, Gary, um, something you mentioned a few minutes ago, bring in the unseen therapist and magic happens. So that's what I'd like to share. And I want to talk about the, uh, the aspect of communicating with the unseen therapist, because I know many people have concerns. Do I hear my highest guidance? Do I hear her correctly? I don't feel I can hear her. I can't do optimal EFT. I'm going to share an example, which will, I think, demonstrate the fact that we don't really need to hear much of anything, <laughs> whether we can or we can't. It's an ability to work on, to hone, but it's okay. You can use optimal EFT, even if you feel you don't have the ability to communicate. So I'm going to give this example. And uh, I think maybe that will ease people's concerns about whether they're hearing 
correctly or not. Sure. And we need this, by the way, because this is this is a different kind of skill and it competes with what we think is right. You know, so, so go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so I, I had a client who had an issue around self-worth. Not that any of us have this issue at all. But anyway, that was her issue. And so I asked her, I did a say this, say I matter. And she said it. And I said, okay, well, how true does that feel to you when you said it? And she said, zero. I said, okay, we've got some work to do. <laughs> so we went back, as you have taught us, as far back as we could go to see if we could uncover some specific events, childhood preferably, that may have initially contributed to this feeling, I don't matter like at all. And so she identified some specific events. We went through them, brought in unseen therapists, I reframed as best I could, listening to guidance. And then the granddaddy issue showed up. It's like we had to resolve some emotional debris first, and then the big one was uncovered. And I said, okay, you know, what's the emotion now when you think about this event, which had to do with mother, not that anyone has any issue with mother or father for that matter, but most of our stuff kind of goes back that far. And so she recalled this event and she said she was angry. And I said, okay, if you would do a zero to 10 intensity on the anger that you feel now when you think about that event. And she said, 400. I've had people that say 10 plus when we do the zero to 10. I've had them say 15, 20. That was my first and only 400 at anger. So I thought, okay, here we go. <laughs> so we go in to do our round of optimal EFT. We bring in unseen therapist. I am reframing up a storm. <laughs> we come out. And I said, okay, let's reassess. I want you to go back into the event, put yourself in there, associate, you are in it, you're playing the movie, where's that anger? And she says, zero. And a thought came to me, wow, if we had been tapping, <laughs> we might've gotten to 200, <laughs> 150, if we're lucky, we could have been tapping, we could still be tapping on this thing. So I was very impressed with that zero. And so I said, okay, um, I am curious, just for fun, if you would say to me, I matter. And she said that, and I said, well, how true does that feel now? I don't know if we've made any progress because she was at zero. And she says, well, now I'm at an 8.5 to nine on a scale of zero to 10. She felt that strongly that she mattered. Well, then I have another thought myself, my ego chimes in and I think, boy, am I a good reframer or what? <laughs> no, no ego there, no ego there. There was zero ego. <laughs> And I'm thinking, boy, I'm listening to the unseen therapist. I am really on this thing. And then she tames the ego <laughs> tremendously by saying, Sherry, what I feel I should tell you, unseen therapist handled the healing before you ever said a word. <laughs> <laughs> so so for everyone that's thinking it's in the words, it's in the what is she telling me to say, sometimes very, very helpful, of course. But in that situation, the 400 went to zero. It was almost like unseen therapist was saying, Sherry, uh, if you wouldn't mind, get out of my way. Do whatever it is you feel inclined to do while I'm handling this healing over here. <laughs> that's what it felt like. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, I get the same. I got to tell you, I get similar things myself. Sometimes I'm doing this and I'm so proud of myself. That is my ego speaking. Oh, didn't I do a good job? But I've always got to get back and say, I didn't do anything. I, yes, I did. I was a good assistant because I helped put stuff on the table and some reframing and stuff like that. But just like I was saying with Marion, I really didn't do anything <laughs> other, th other than facilitate. Okay. Correct. Great. Anything more? Thank you, Sarah. Anything more? Yeah. No, not now. All right. Great. So let's turn to Nami. Hold on a minute here. Nami, where are you? There you are. Let me um, ask to unmute you. Are you there? Hi, Gary. Hi. Hi, Nami. Well, people that are here already know who you are in a way because we've We've kind of put your your story out there. So thank you, thank you. I you know the it's sometimes very difficult to be as personal as you're going to be in all of this because this is your personal life. But there's a lot of messages in here. It's when we want to spend some time on, etc. So um, let me just ask you before you ever came to the unseen therapist. Um, if I understand your background, you've had your share of dark moments. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I suffered from anxiety probably most of my life. But after I had my second son, I had postpartum depression and anxiety. And that's where I really hit what I thought would be my lowest point, but when I hit a low point. And that's what I think opened me up to joining optimally FT and seeking something to help me because I just did not want to spend time there in the yeah. anxiety and depression. Well, could you, and I understand it's personal, so take care of yourself, Nami, but could you talk about what postpartum depression is like, the depths of it? Not everybody's been through it, including me. Okay. Uh, uh, so if you get an idea of, of I mean, there were tears involved, et cetera, and it was an ongoing thing. Expand some, can you? Yeah, it's, it's if it lasts for long enough, because of course we all, especially after having a baby, have moments of sleep deprivation, of feeling tired, fatigued, but it was like day after day after day of hopelessness where I thought truly it wouldn't get any better, that I would feel sad for the rest of my life that there was no end to it like I could never catch up I was constantly getting sick I had to take care of this baby and my older one keep up with the household like I felt at that time that there was so much to do I couldn't get ahead my body was failing me because I was constantly sick and there were moments where I would just lie on the floor sobbing and the moment when I thought that the world would be better off without me, that was like the point in which, thank goodness I had some awareness to recognize that that was not a good thought to have. I had to do something about it. So I went to my doctor, I tried to start meditating. I did try to grasp for whatever I could, but the gift of optimal EFT landed in my hands and I signed up. And I know I probably would never would have had I not been in such a desperate place. So in a way the unseen therapist found me, right? <laughs> well, yeah, unseen therapist found you, the, our course, our course found, found you. Um, and the way I assess our previous conversations we've had, um, you, you, communicate with the unseen therapist with great frequency, like several times per day. Am I correct? Now I do. Yes. Okay. But to begin with, it was just sort of a, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but sort of like, well, here's this new thing. Now what? It was a process to get you to where you are now. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. I first started off with just listening to your videos, doing the lessons. And when 
you when you told me <laughs> through your um, website, like, okay, practice this, try these exercises, find five events of your own. So I really only connected with the unseen therapist through your cues, through your website. So as I work through the lessons, as I watch the videos, every time you'd pause with the client, I would do it for myself. So those are the only times I would connect. And then I joined a practice group. So that was another time I connected. But other than that, it wasn't like I was connecting with her on a regular basis. It was really in those moments only. So would I presume correctly um, that as you were doing in the earlier stages, as you were doing this, you weren't necessarily feeling some kind of connection. You were just noticing that well, you got a result. Did I say it right? I think at the beginning, it was more just gauging how it was working through how I, on the scale of zero to 10, right? The intensity at which, so I did feel like, okay, I felt a little less anxious as I went into that event. It was originally an eight, but now I'm feeling like it was a four, like that type of a feeling I had. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say that it was just through those moments that I connected that I was feeling a difference. Yeah. Okay. But gradually we get to a point where now, now you are communicating at, with great frequency several times a day on average. Yes. Day. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's uh, shift if we can for the moment to this. I'm going to call it your last year. You had a very challenging year. You had a marital issue. You had a, a pregnancy birth delivery issue and so on. And there were lots of reasons for you to be down the tubes, if you will, to the dark hole again. So let's go through that some. Uh, start where you want. I'm thinking of the marital issue, but if there's something before that, tell us. So I signed up after I'd had my second son to get through those issues. And I vowed never to have any children again after that experience but I didn't want to like have to experience that again in the future. So I was like, Oh, I'll sign up for optimal EFT. And I would just doing the practice groups. I was doing it. I thought I was doing great. <laughs> and then COVID hit. And of course my anxiety spun out of control, but the gift of COVID is that like, I couldn't work. Everything was closed down where I live. So my, um, there was no job available and that I was able to work on my anxiety and fears around COVID. And then because I wasn't working, I really, joined more practice groups at that time and I really dug in and I thought this is amazing I'm finally really working past all of my <laughs> childhood events and like I felt a lot of hope and that's when I started to feel like I would wanted another baby and it it had never occurred to me that I could even possibly have another child after the experience I had with my second but I had this like feeling of I was meant to have another child. And so I got pregnant last year in August. And I thought, this, this is amazing. Like, what a gift. I have done all this work. And now my gift is another baby. I couldn't have been more in a positive place, despite like COVID and the world circumstances. In my bubble of quarantining, I felt very blessed. I was in a place of gratitude. And I just thought, this is great. This is what my life will be like now. And I'll have three beautiful children. <laughs> and then, yeah, the spiral of events occurred where. Okay. Well, before we get to that spiral, just for a moment, I just want to make sure we're clear on one point. After your second child, your second child was cesarean? My first son was a cesarean and oh, yeah. my second okay. was natural. Okay. All right. But after the second child and after the postpartum depression and all of that, never, 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 ever again, which is what I'm hearing, okay? Um, then continued work with unseen therapists, gradually shifted all of that. What I'm hearing is, but I don't ever want to put words in your mouth. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. You correct, please. Um, that your resistance to the bliss of another child softened. It went from never, never, never again to, oh, this would be good. That's a big move by itself. 
At least that's what I'm hearing. Absolutely. After my second in the experience I went through, I truly did vow never to have another child because I could repeat that again. I, it was very likely that I would go through that again, the postpartum experience I had. So I was totally closed off to the idea. But as I did this work, it really occurred to me if I could heal what led me to have those postpartum depression and anxiety symptoms, if I've healed them, it couldn't possibly happen again. And I had so much faith in that, that my true desire to have more children and my two boys are so closely bonded and I imagined them having another sibling and I had always wanted more siblings. I only have one older sibling. So I I had always, and that began to sprout the possibility of another child. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So you're pregnant. And then if the story unfolds about three months into the pregnancy, you get hit with a biggie. Yeah. I have to mention to you, I never mentioned this to you before, but my cat passed away. My cat passed away and being pregnant, you're very emotionally sensitive. So that devastated me because it was unexpected. He hadn't been sick. Um, This was my childhood cat. And yes, he was up in age, but like, it was just so unexpected. And there too, the unseen therapist came to me and said, because everyone would say, take your cat to the vet if they're throwing up. Clearly there's a medical issue. But the unseen therapist, I asked her, I kept asking her, And she said not to take him to the vet, that it would cause him more fear and it would isolate him more from us. So from that experience too, I felt like I connected to the unseen therapist more that Mm -hmm. in terms of even life and death of my cat, that she could come and provide wisdom and help me to heal my issues around death and dying too. Some of them, that was a wonderful experience. And then literally a few days later, I find out that my husband has been having an affair And I, that then became the newest depth of despair and sorrow and anger and rage, like so much, especially being pregnant, all of your emotions are heightened. And I truly thought then that this was it. This was death. This was the experience of death and I would not survive it. I just couldn't imagine how it could be any worse and how I would get out of it truly when I first found out, but I connected to the unseen therapist. I went to my practice groups, just bawling my eyes out and they helped me. Each of them helped me and day by day, minute by minute, even because all day and night I'd work with the unseen therapist because I couldn't sleep. I wasn't eating. It was truly unearthing so many deep issues, like huge issues that I could not look at before. Like I chose not to, cause it would have overwhelmed me, I think, but this forced me to. Well, there's a lot that can go into, you know, a, a marital affair. And, and one thing I want to emphasize here is one of the things we've recognized with optimal EFT is it's not, so much what happens that is the real issue. And yes, 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 that certainly seems to be a big issue. But more, it's your response to it. That is the real issue. What actually happens, the fact that he had this affair, we're not going to change. Um, What we can change is your response to it. And many people, the the response to it, it, I mean, there's a whole wide spectrum of it. Some people on one end of it, they say, oh, well, good. Now I can go have an affair too. I mean, that's, that's one end of it. The other end of it is, oh, my whole world revolves around the marital vows, the culture, the everything. And you violate that. You violate everything that I've ever held to be dear, near and dear. And you're more cl- closer to that end. And so when that happens, the foundation got kicked out from under you. Did I say it right? Absolutely. The illusion of my perfect life, my perfect family was completely taken, totally, yeah. totally knocked out from underneath me. Yes. Yes. And that's not something that you just say, oh, well, 
too, right? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. And without, without the unseen therapist and without her assistance, right, through my practice groups and your help, too, I really, I think I may have stayed there. I think I may have stayed there. And I even felt I would need medication. Like I needed to be hospitalized. Like I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I just felt like I wouldn't survive this, right? That my entire picture of what I thought was my life and my future was now being threatened. So. Yeah. Well, that's a big issue. That's a great big issue. And it didn't, your resolution on that didn't happen, if I understand it right, overnight. It oh, took no. a while, but lots of <laughs> yeah. conversations with unseen therapists, lots of what about this and what about that and, and answers. Uh, yeah, and it's still, I think, a process because there are so many issues that it brought up. But I'm now in a place where I can be grateful for this experience because it, had it not happened, I would have lived in this illusion, not knowing truths about me and not bringing up things to work on and not, not really living my life truly. It would have always been that I would have walked around almost faking it right because I wanted so desperately to believe that I could have the perfect marriage and the perfect family and the perfect future I wanted that so much that I was willing to ignore all these deep 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 buried things that I wasn't willing to look at but this forced me to yes and in our metaphor you are then now putting these things on the table and with that comes resolution and peace. Let me shift now for a moment, if I may, to the birth experience. And let me, let me kind of preface this, if I may, for a moment. There are a lot of our experiences that we have with optimal EFT that a skeptic looking at it could say, Ah, uh, well, that was a coincidence. Or, oh, well, it could have been, this could have been. You know, Lots of other skeptical things about you know, you're bringing in what God and unseen what unseen therapy, you know, skeptics. Okay. So the, the usual response to these things is, is, well, it was just coincidence. I mean, that's sort of, I've got a broad brush on that, but they'll use that quite often. This is just coincidence, but we have, I mean, we can't prove or disprove the unseen therapist's, position in a lot of these things there's no way to really prove or disprove it um but we have a lot of coincidences <laughs> they happen over and over and over again and so the skeptic the skeptic has a harder and harder time <laughs> with coincidences because they keep showing up okay but the one thing that no no skeptic ever could argue with, at least i don't think they can okay has to do with your birth experience you were in labor for 16 hours, as I recall it. Well, you tell yes. the story. You tell the story. You tell the story. So even though everything else was collapsing around me, I still held like hope and faith that this baby was like the gift. This baby would be what would help me through all of this. And but at 34 weeks, my water broke, which is very early. <laughs> So the panic of that experience, I had to go to the hospital and they, yeah, they, I labored for 16 hours, but I, I asked the unseen therapist to come with me and she helped me to labor unmedicated. Every time a contraction would come on, I would just try to connect with her. And she kept saying like, you need to let go of your fears, release your fears. That's what's causing you pain. Like, I just kept trying to connect with her and it's very hard to do when you're in labor, but I, I kept trying, I kept trying. But at, after 16 hours, what was happening is the baby's heart rate would get very low every time I had a contraction. So, and I wasn't changing and I was six to seven meters dilated and they kept checking and I wasn't progressing. So they, the nurse came in and said, we'd like to give you um, 
an epidural. We want to prepare you for an emergency C-section because you're not changing. You're not progressing. The baby's heart rate is lowering every time you have a contraction. Um, yeah, we want to prepare you for the C-section. And <laughs> again, panic set in. <laughs> My first had been a C-section. The recovery was really, really a lot longer and difficult. I did not want a C-section. I did not want to have a surgery. And I, again, was like, okay, unseen therapist. <laughs> I really surrender to you this time. I had been trying to throughout labor, but I really surrendered it over to you. And she said to me, change position, change position. You, you need to go onto your hands and knees. Do not fear. I promise you this baby will fly out of you. Just change position. All is well, all is well. <laughs> so no, I, I want to, I want to stop you right there. Okay. So you're getting this, message from unseen therapist. Now at this time you are surrounded by a nurse, a doctor, what's going on in the, in the maternity ward? Yeah, so the nurse is there monitoring me, monitoring the baby's heart rate. Um, I think she's still trying to convince me to get the epidural, but I was like, nope, just wait. <laughs> and I just also want to clarify, like when I first connected with the unseen therapist through this work, it's always through finding a root event, gauging the intensity, like it was a, a process, right, to connect with her and have her to heal root events. But in this situation, I was purely connecting with her in the moment to help me through labor. Well, you're, somehow or other, your, 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 voice, your voice is gone. Your voice is gone. Just a minute. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So I'm just connecting with her and I'm just asking for help in those moments. It's right. not like, All oh, right. let me find the root issue of it. Let me work on a root event. It, 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 I just want to clarify like the way I communicate with the unseen therapist. It's just, it can be so varied, but in this situation, it was very much in the moment. Help me. <laughs> All right. Now, what I did. I'm trying to get this picture in my mind. So paint it for me, if you will. There you are. You did get on your hands and knees and the baby did fly out. That is what happened. Yes. I, but describe what went on. But I'm also interested in the reactions of the doctors and nurses and the, those attending you. So paint that picture, could you? So I go onto my hands and knees and I can feel the baby like drop. And so I tell the nurse, the baby is coming, the baby is coming. She did not expect it. She had literally just told me I was only six to seven. She wanted to give me an epidural. She checks me and she's like in a panic, presses all the buttons and then a whole flurry of like nurses um, because he was, he was gonna be premature at 34 weeks, the NICU pediatrician and nurse, the doc, like all these people fly into the room and he literally does just fly out of me and he is born in his sack, which I think is rare, but he literally just flew out of me in a matter of minutes from when I changed position. It was minutes of all of this. And the nurse was truly in a bit of a panic, which yeah, it wasn't helpful to me, but <laughs> yeah, in a matter of minutes, he did fly out of me. You're violating every belief they have as far as what's supposed to go on in the birthing process. You're supposed to be on your back doing it. And, you know, this, this is standard way. But, you know, I want to get back to my point of this is not coincidence. This is so, so out of the ordinary. It's so beyond coincidence to say, now they get on your hands and knees, the baby will fly out to have that happen. I, I really want to emphasize that, okay? <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody can justify how that's coincidence, I would love to hear it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so there you are, and the nurses and everybody is surprised, apparently. Uh, are they concerned about you? Are they thinking you're nuts? I mean, uh, uh, you got any sense of that? So when I said the baby dropped, like the nurse asked me to go onto my back, but I don't think she expected the baby to just like come out so quickly. So it was, it, I, it was a panicked environment, but I, I knew I wanted to birth this baby in peace. Like I did not want this baby to come out 
and experience all this chaos and this like fear that was like being emitted from the medical team of like not being ready truly. Um, so I just stayed connected with the unseen therapist. So as the doctors, as a, as a doctor came in, they had to call him out of surgery and he came in. They were telling me, okay, you're having contraction um, push. And I, I didn't listen to them because <laughs> the unseen therapist told me, don't, don't listen to them. Listen, listen to me, surrender. Like your body knows what it has to do. Do nothing. I don't have to do anything. Your body knows what it has to do. Do nothing. And so they would tell me what to do, but I didn't actually listen. So at a few points in time, the nurse was like, are you there? Are you okay? Like, Because <laughs> I was just trying to stay connected to the unseen therapist. And then he just flew out of me without me pushing, without me doing anything. He really did fly out of me. But I know that the medical team were, they were like, she's not listening to us. Like, what is she doing? And I know they were in a bit of a panic, but for me, what was most important was just staying connected, staying connected with the unseen therapist and listening to her because clearly she knew better than me or really the medical staff who are going to go have me um, have an emergency C-section. So, yeah. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, let's shift to what will probably be the end of our little journey here. The baby was a surprise to you. Talk about that. Yeah, so... Oh, and all wait, my... wait, before you go any further, are we going to be able to meet Jace? Jace being his name? Yes, I'll go get him at the end. He's, I think he's still sleeping right now, but I'll, I'll come all bring right. him on. He's so all cute. I right. know <laughs> I'm, I'm biased, but... So all my pregnancy ultrasounds had come back normal. Um, so when he was born, I just thought prematurity would be his issue. But, um, once they took him and they were, you know, helping him, um, the NICU pediatrician brought him over to me and she started showing me all these physical characteristics. And I was like, what, what is she talking about? And she said, they're all characteristics of down syndrome. We we're going to do genetic testing to confirm, but we suspect he has down syndrome. And this literally couldn't, again, could not have surprised me more because everything in my pregnancy, there was no indication of it. Although they did the screening for Down syndrome, he didn't have any of the markers um, on the ultrasound. So again, I had to turn to the unseen therapist because could, in my eyes, I just could not accept anything more that was outside of my illusion and hope because my marriage was out the window, my perfect family was out the window, and I just needed a perfect baby <laughs> to like make me be okay. And now that, again, that illusion was taken from me. So I turned to the unseen therapist and she did keep saying, he is a gift. You, you don't know it yet, but he is a gift for you, a gift to your family, a gift to all those around you, he will be. And so I, in that moment, they let me hold him for just a little bit before they took him to the NICU. But in that moment, I was able to connect to love with him, to not judge him, to not bring in all these fears that later on would happen. But in that moment, I was able to connect. I think that is truly such a great gift that the unseen therapist gave me that in that moment, I wasn't like struck with fear of like my child with special needs. It was really that I was able to connect with love. So that was her gift. And his gift to me too. That um, I'm going to tell you. I, I told you this story. I'm going to tell everybody else's story for a moment. And it, it, to me, it, your story is very moving. My story is moving it well in a little different way. I hope I get through it. Okay, but I want to put a punctuation mark on the Down syndrome issue. When I was growing up. I had no real interface with anybody who had Down syndrome. They didn't attend my schools and, and they didn't play football with me or any that. I just wasn't exposed to it very much. So I didn't, I knew sort of about it, but I didn't know much about it. And one day I was in my thirties, I guess, I think somewhere in there. One of my, I was in the investment and insurance business. One of my clients asked me to go take a tour of a, of an organization that helped Down syndrome people called HOPE. It was in San Jose, California, a little bit south of San Francisco. So I went there 
this lady greets me at the door. You know, they're looking for me to donate some money, and, which I eventually did and so on. But, but she was all business. She says, I'm going to take you through what's going on here so you can see it and all of that. Um, hold on a second. But she said, she said, don't stop and mingle, you know, with them because they're busy. So what, what, what they would, what this organization would do, would they would provide jobs for people with Down syndrome. Uh, and local corporations, you know, wanted to have things packaged, for example, and, and things that Down syndrome people could do, could do well. And it was like a little assembly line. You know, uh, one person would have a, have a, have a box, and they'd open the top and it put the box to the next person, next person would put something in the box and then they would close it. Somebody else puts a label on it, sort of a do this, do that. Down syndrome people do that very well. They enjoy doing that. They like doing it. It bores other people, you know, uh, it just bores them. So we began walking through this assembly line. And the moment I walked into this room, there were rows and rows and tables and tables of Down syndrome people doing this job, but they instantly looked at me. Somebody knew, but what's interesting about them was it wasn't so much somebody's new, it was there was a, a love in their eyes. Oh, how exciting to see you. And there was really something about that that really kind of, and it moved me, it moved me. And I would do some eye contact with someone, they'd look at me and, and all of this. The lady escorting me, all business, you know, come on, Gary, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's move on, okay. I didn't like that so much, but anyway, so as we were moving through this, I felt this tap on my shoulder, and we were moving by a place that was kind of elevated, and I wasn't noticing because I was looking over here this way at the, the assembly line, and so I stopped, and there was a Down syndrome lady, I'm guessing in her 30s somewhere, she wanted to show me, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> I'll get it. Hold on. <laughs> she wanted to show me how she was making this box. It was a kind of a box that, you know, where you fold up sides and put it together and make a box. Okay. And so I stopped because she was so proud to show me. This box, she does it and I looked at it and I said, and I, I was right in line with her. It, I was, I, I, there was a loving moment going on here you don't normally get to, okay? The Down syndrome folks often have a level of love within them that we have a difficult time sometimes addressing, okay? And so I complimented her on the box. I reached out and touched her. She touched me. The business lady said, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. <laughs> so we went on, okay? But you know, our life, our life in this illusory world unfolds <clears throat> One way we can measure its unfoldment is in the moments that we have. And there was a moment. Okay. Now, a special needs child, you know, I don't know if I'm at that point in my life, is if I was really ready, if I had a special needs child like that to address it the way you're addressing. I didn't have unseen therapists. I wasn't listening to her at the time and so on. But that moment, that moment of love showed up in a way that most non-Down syndrome people have a difficult time getting to. I just want to share that story. I just want to share that story, okay? And I'm glad I got through it. <laughs> okay, so... Anything else you want to you want to uh, add, uh, Nami? Yeah, I just want to add that I came in wanting to heal my past, but I've come out of this with optimal EFT and the unseen therapist, literally having someone to turn to all day and every day 
through the practice groups, truly having her assistants help in so many ways. It's, it's been such a gift, Gary, that I cannot thank you enough for. The ability to connect with the unseen therapist, not just to he- what I thought was to heal, you know, childhood events, but really to be able to take her with me to like Jace's medical appointments. Like he's got a lot of medical appointments and I can bring the unseen therapist with me. And it's not that I don't suffer from anxiety and it's not that I don't have moments of panic and sadness and anger. All those still happen to me yet because I'm able to connect with the unseen therapist, I have, I have hope and the ability to get through my day knowing that if anything does come up, I can turn to the unseen therapist. And that is the greatest mm-hmm. gift, truly, mm-hmm. that I never had before and I didn't see the possibility of before. To me, to me, Nami, that ability to communicate as you are doing and as you have developed in an extraordinarily good way is the ultimate skill for anybody to learn. That's just my view. Okay. And you're learning it. And I thank you for sharing all this. I would like to invite you now, if you would, while I talk to Ann Ryan for a minute with some of her experiences, go get Jace for us and let us meet him. Could, sure. Can we do that? Okay. Yeah, all right. absolutely. I'll be all back. Right. All right. Hold on. So, Ann Ryan, let me speak with you for a moment. Are you there? Hi, Gary. I'm here. Hi. Good. Good. Uh, Nami is, is getting Jace for us to meet. Um, but you had some, I want to finish this up with some experiences uh, that you and, and Mary and Norma have had um, with the unseen therapist, the communication and so on. And I do want to mention this, a, a couple of people or our members and so on have raised their hands to say something. And I'm sorry, usually that's what we want you to do. But in this case, we're focusing only on this. Questions you may have or comments about it, we will cover in our next webinar. Okay. But for the moment, I want to stay focused just on this. So, Anne, Anne, if you would, you've got experiences communicating with unseen therapists. So, tell us. Yeah, um, many experiences, Gary. But I, the ones I like the most are the kind of simple, everyday ones. I mean, you know, we've heard Nami's story, and it is amazing. You know, and her stories come about because of her practice and practice and practice. Um, and, and I just find now for me, and it's taken a long time. I mean, I'm part of your, your, your membership since this started, whenever that was. Um, but at this point, it's like, I touch base with the unseen therapist many times during the day. And even, I'm going to give you an example. And it's a really everyday example. Um, yesterday morning, I woke up very, uh, just scattered and frazzled, a really big to-do list. I mean, they didn't have to be done yesterday, but all these things, oh, I have to do, I have to do. And I couldn't settle. And I just asked the unseen therapist, like, just, you know, help me feel less scattered. And she said really clearly, she said, you know, wait until the flow comes. Do nothing today. Wait until the flow comes. So I thought, okay. Um, and, and I left the things. I, I didn't do them. I woke up today and in three hours, I did what it would have taken me a week to do yesterday with kind of the difference. It sounds a little thing but it makes a tremendous difference. So I think she is there in the big ways, you know, like Nami's experience is just phenomenal. And I've heard it, you know, because I'm in a practice group with her and it's still phenomenal to hear it again. And she's there with us, like in what seem like the little ways, but they're not the little ways because by listening to her, like it brought so much more peace and ease to my day yesterday instead of trying to roll this boulder up a hill if you kind of get it in a metaphorical way. Sure. Um, sure. And just, just, she said, leave it. Wait until there's flow and ease. And 24 hours later, there was flow and ease and tick, 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 list is dealt with. So. Yeah. Yeah, what we, got, what, what we need to do is, well, here, this is the way the process tends to work for our members. At first, well, I'm going to try it, but I'm not used to this and, my ego is me giving me competing answers and stuff like that, you know, but we try it and we try it. And, no, wait a minute. Now that this seemed to work. Well, how did that work? So you get a result and then you get another result and another and another and another and another. And after a while you begin to build 
trust so that asking the unseen therapist becomes more of a routine rather than trying to rely on your ego's version of how to do stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. And the more you do that simultaneously with that, and correct me if you don't see this the same way, more peace shows up in your system. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's very subtle. You know, it, it's often only after weeks and months um, that you, something happens. You think, oh, God, I normally have X or Y reaction to that. Or that person normally, you know, really gets under my skin. And it was just such a peaceful interaction. So it's all the time it's chipping away doing stuff. Um, and sometimes we see things very in the moment, like my contrast from yesterday to today. But other times it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of this cumulative subtle effect that goes on. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think we're hearing a little sounds. Uh, <laughs> hold on a minute. Yes. Let, me, let, me, let me mute. Are you there? Yes. This is Jake. Well, actually, actually, you're not supposed to be able to be speaking for a minute. Let me, I have to unmute you or something. Well, it says you're muted. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now let me ask to unmute. <laughs> Hello? Well, well, I'm hearing you. It just doesn't show you as your mic working, but I'm hearing you. So I hope others can. Uh, uh, oh. uh, 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 and, and nod your head if, if you can hear her. Yes. Oh, okay, good. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nami. This is Jace. Hello, Hello Jace. World. <laughs> uh, can, so, we all, can we all give Jace a nice little hug and give me a little <laughs> kiss on his cheek? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Hey, hello. Thank he's you been, so much, Gary. He's been having his nap. Yes. Okay. Thank, like thank you, J thank you, Jace, for gracing us with your presence today. <laughs> thank you so much, Gary. All right, we'll be moving on. Thank, thank you, Nami. Thank you, Nami. Uh, hold on a second here. Well, actually, can you mute yourself somehow? It shows you're muted, but anyway. All right, so let me let me shift over here to Mary McGrory. Uh, where are there you are? Is Mary there? Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi, Gary. You too have been developing your skills with unseen therapists, communication. Uh, you were going to share a thought or two, please. Yeah, what I wanted to speak about was. Um... For me, I was working so long for so long with EFT with the, before I got into optimal EFT. And what I loved discovering was the if I felt any kind of resistance or in myself or in a client, then inviting in the unseen therapist was something that was so simple and so freeing. And I just didn't feel alone anymore. I felt like I was supported. I felt like uh, if something got tricky or was challenging or difficult for me or for a client, then I could count on her and I could just invite her in and the love would come and the love would just do everything else. It would it's get me out of the way and get my ego out of the way and get my fears out of the way and get my doubts out of the way and and all these crazy thoughts that could interfere. And it would just bring me back to a state of peace, knowing that I'm here to help her and she's here to help me. And we can get the job done together. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's, that's beautifully said. Beautifully said. But it takes a while. I'm just emphasizing this again. It takes a while to get there. You didn't get there automatically the day you signed up for our optimal EFT course, for example. At least I don't think you did, did you? <laughs> no, it didn't come immediately, but the reassurance of asking for her help was like at the beginning, that it wasn't just me trying to do it on my own, that it wasn't just me trying to figure out, okay, which technique am I gonna use or, or which paragraph in the manual is gonna help me to get this, to understand this, you know, thinking that it's always gonna be outside of myself. So inviting in the unseen therapist, it's, you know, as you say, it's an inside job. We can work on the inside and being able to 
take a step back, you know, being able to say it's okay, I'm not doing this on my own. That was hugely helpful for me because I had been struggling for so long and full of so many doubts. So yeah, the confidence in the messages that I that I'd received, that took quite a lot of work. And that yeah. was hugely thanks to the practice groups. Yeah. You know? All right. Marvelous. Marvelous. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Anything Thank more you so want much. to mention? No, that's great. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Hold on a second here. Um, now we're going to, we're going to close here with some thoughts by, for, from Norma, uh, and then Sherry, if you have any, any final thoughts, and then we'll close this up for today. So let me, um, talk to Norma. Norma, are you there? Hi. How are Hi. You? Hi. You too have had an experience or two communicate with unseen therapists. Yes. Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. Well, um, share. If yeah. You know. So um, but just through circumstances of geographic moves, I, I started out with a um, full time, well, mostly EFT tapping practice, but that kind of dwindled. And just because of circumstances, the majority of my clients are not trained or knowledgeable about EFT. And so um, the one of the things when I first joined your website, the question was, how can I use optimal EFT with clients that don't use EFT in the background? Um, and Sherry and you both said to me, just do it and practice. And what you mentioned is it's really difficult to do when you're trying to listen to the client and, and bring in unseen therapist. Um, but I was very motivated, especially when you had Russell who came in, who works with prisoners in Australia yes. and his yeah. use of um, conversational EFT. And I was reminded, I was talking to Nami about this this morning, that there's a commercial going around about Duolingo, which is an app that helps you learn a foreign language. So they'll show somebody trying to learn Japanese, somebody German, somebody Spanish, and they're terrible at it. And then finally they get it. And the narrator says, if you want to be really good at something, you first have to be horrible at it. And I think it's... <laughs> It's brilliant. I just, I use that all the time. Right? May I say because, an amen? May I say an amen? Okay. Exactly. Because we all give up, right? When we're horrible at it. So these are the ways that I use EFT. I use it to center myself before a session to get myself out of the way to remember that the, th the most important thing is to be present and to pay attention that nothing I do is as important as that. Uh, when clients are being quote unquote di difficult, right? They're repeating the same patterns. They're saying the same things. They're not taking responsibility for themselves. And I find myself getting judgmental. I call in on unseen therapist and she immediately gets me into a state of love, acceptance, non-judgment, and the session completely turns around. Well, let me, let me, let, let me interject something if I can. When you do that, when you get more, I'm going to use the term centered, if you will, but you radiate differently. Mm -hmm. If you're worked up, oh, they're not doing it right. And I can't Absolutely. get some, done, done, done. you radiate that. Okay. Whether you want to or not, you just do. Okay. And when you get down to this peaceful place, you radiate that. And That's they, pick up, they pick up the radiation and there you go. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 not at all. That's absolutely true. And also Unseen Therapist helps me, uh, leads me to specific events. Like when I'm not sure, you know, like uh, um, she'll show me like, ask about this, ask about that. Does that resonate? And I have two examples. One is uh, a woman who, well, this was not so much that, but she was, ha she had the beginnings of a migraine headache when we started the session. And I, I, I released it to unseen therapist. I was asking her to uh, to work on her. We didn't. We weren't doing actively EFT. At the end of the session, her migraine had gone from an eight to a three, mm -hmm. and she wrote to me the next day that it was completely gone, and it stayed that way for over a week. Yeah. Um, and and another way is oh, I have let, a client. Let, let, let me stop one second there. One thing people can do. I mean, this would be especially true for people who don't want to do anything other than conventional talk therapy. I don't, want, I don't want to do tapping. I don't want to do God or anything else. I just want to talk out my issues. While they're talking them out, you can just simply bring in unseen therapists. And, and what I would do is I would start 
as we talk, start gearing those, that discussion to specific events. Well, when was the first time you re thought about that or that kind of, oh, it was when I was six or something. Oh, tell me about that. And, then, and you gear them towards it all the time, bringing an unseen therapist. Now you're dealing with a specific event. To them, it is talk therapy. Mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly good to bring an unseen therapist, but you're meeting the client where they are at the mm -hmm. moment. Anyway, that's me talking. No, about no, that's Carry true. On. And uh, that was one of the things, uh, just like Sherry had said, practice, practice, practice. When I asked you, how do I know if it's working way in the beginning? You said, we'll bring the subject up again and see where the intensity yeah. is, right? That's how we yeah. check it without them realizing it. Yeah. yeah. And so I had another client that um, was riding the, what I call the emotional roller coaster with her husband, like, uh -huh. right? And which is completely unhelpful to her and to him. And Unseen Therapist led me to the question that helped us see the pattern in her childhood in which her father would use women for whatever they could give him and then discard them once they were of no use to him. So my client, she, saw, she began to see the connection between how if she's not helping her husband, if she's not taking care of him, she's of no use to him and he's going to get rid of her. But, you know, that may seem, sound simplistic, but that was unseen therapist pointing me in that direction and asking the questions that led her to that, to that conclusion. So, um, yeah. So, so those are the ways in which right. some of the, some of the ways in which I some use of the it. ways. And, yeah. We yes, have many. Okay. Yes. And All I also right. have seen a lot of people talking about wanting to start practice groups. Uh -huh. There is a tab on the website. And I know people are nervous and anxious about starting their own groups. Don't be, it's the easiest thing in the world. And people are just oh. waiting for you to start one. All right. <laughs> the tab you're speaking of, it's in our members section. It's not on oh, our regular. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Right. But that's okay. Um, all right. Anything more you want to add? Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. Let me, uh, where are you? Mute. Okay. Sherry, any final thoughts? Well, there's something that um, Nami brought up, which is such a wonderful point. Uh, she brought up a lot of wonderful points, but uh, at the end, she said she was drawn to optimal EFT because she thought it'd be very useful to heal past events, childhood memories, but then having worked with her, what a gift to know that this power is within us. 24 yeah. hours a day, seven days a week, and she can turn to this power. And I just, I think I saw a quick note in the chat as it flashed in front of me. I haven't been in it, but I think I saw someone ask a question, is the unseen therapist outside of us? And I just wanted to say unseen therapist, higher power source, whatever name we want to refer to her as, she is a power that's within each one of us. And she is there to help us. She knows what would make us happiest. She knows the best way to get there. She knows what could be blocking us. She wants so much to help us and we can turn to her within and invite her to help us in our journey uh, every day, all day. So, and to emphasize that, um... Many people think of God, unseen therapist sources, as something out there, like up there, typically. You know, somehow it's up there. With all our fancy telescopes, nobody's ever found God up there. Okay? <laughs> but that's how people tend to think of it. It's this sort of a conditioned thought. And some of our logos, you know, has an unseen therapist at the end of the top of stairs up in the clouds and, you know, the eyes and all of that. That's to plug into people's general condition belief. It's there. But we also talk about it. In fact, the first words in my book is the unseen therapist is the spiritual healer within. She's within. We are a part of it. We are all one. We are all one. Quantum physics has proven that. So have thousands of other spiritual experiences that are you can find on the Internet and so on. Have all proven that now. She's there. The real skill involved here is not to get her to talk. No, she's always guiding. We have to understand that. She's always guiding, always, 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 always. We just aren't listening 
or maybe a better way to say that is we have not learned to listen yet. And through our optimal EFT course and so on, starting with the book, I'd recommend everybody who's not a member at least read the book because the book gets you started, okay? You'll start, you'll start to learn how to listen. Extraordinarily important. Learn how to listen. That's what we're doing here. So anyway, with that in mind, I'm going to give you, Sherry, and, and Nami, and all of, all of those who participated with us, and everybody listening to us, et cetera, a great big hug, and hope our non-members got a lot out of this. That was the hope. Move ourselves forward. Those of you who want to, uh, I'm going to leave this, I'm going to close this down now, but those of you who want to add uh, things to our chat to tell me what, to, what you liked about it, didn't like about it, how to improve it, and things like that, I read it all. I read it all.